Middle market companies have closed the books on a year that demonstrated why and how they are the most dynamic part of the U.S. economy, increasing revenues and adding jobs faster than either big companies or small business. We track their performance at the National Center for the Middle Market, and the 2016 story is a dramatic one. I'm Tom Stewart, the Executive Director of the National Center for the Middle Market at the Ohio State University Fisher College of Business with the latest data from our Middle Market Indicator. The Middle Market Indicator, the MMI, is a quarterly pulse check for the performance of companies with revenues between $10 million and $1 billion a year. This is the Middle Market. These companies account for about a third of private sector GDP and employment, with the other thirds coming from companies that are smaller or larger. The data that you're about to hear were collected in the first two weeks of December 2016, so they're very up to date. The middle market completed 2016 on a high note. Annualized revenue growth for these companies came at 6.9%, up from 6.3% in the quarter before. And in addition, a higher percentage of companies reported revenue growth than did in the quarter before. Now, the National Center for the Middle Market has tracked middle market performance for five years now. We have 20 quarters of data. And the average increase in revenue is 6.4%. So that 6.9% number is a very good number indeed, one of the four highest that we have seen. It's also well ahead of the revenue growth of the companies in the Standard & Poor's 500. The S&P 500 grew 4.4% annualized in 2016, so the middle market did more than 50% better than big companies did. Within the middle market, it was the largest middle market companies, those with revenues between $100 million and a billion, that performed the best. Their revenue growth was 8.1% in 2016. This, too, is a bang-up number. I've noted before that we are deep into a cycle of economic expansion. This is the very long in historical terms. It is the third longest expansion in U.S. economic history. And usually you see the rate of growth flatten or even slow down as expansions grow long in the tooth. That hasn't happened yet. For the third quarter in a row, the construction industry led the field in middle market growth, top line growth of 12.6% year on year. Services and financial services followed pretty closely behind them. Somewhat surprisingly, manufacturing turned in 7% revenue growth in 2016. Wholesale and retail trade were the weakest performing industries, although both showed solid gains compared to the quarter before. So in sum, the U.S. middle market is entering 2017 with a really solid, indeed an impressive 2016 on its books. You've been hearing good numbers about employment and pay from the overall economy. Data from the middle market show that those good numbers are chiefly driven by what's been happening in the middle market. From the fourth quarter middle market indicator, we can report that mid-sized companies grew their payrolls by 5.4% in 2016. This is the highest number that we have seen in the five years that we have tracked middle market employment growth. The average over this five-year period is 3.4%. A couple of other data points show exactly how impressive this number is. First of all, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, Private sector employment in the U.S. grew at a bit over 1.6% in the last 12 months. So middle market employment grew more than three and a half times faster than employment in the private sector as a whole. Second, in 2016, we saw accelerating job growth. So every quarter, the rate of growth in the middle market, the rate of growth in employment in the middle market grew faster than it had the quarter before. Now, looking ahead, Employers predict continued strong payroll growth. The projection they give us is 3.4%, which is exactly the average we've seen for the last five years. But you should note that every time we ask them for a forecast, they underpredict and overdeliver. Usually, they deliver numbers that are about a full percentage point higher than what they predict. From an industry standpoint, construction leads the way in employment growth as it did in revenue growth 
and similarly services number two in revenue is number two in employment. Healthcare jobs come next. Revenue in the healthcare industry grew 7.2% in the last 12 months, employment 6.2%. Retail also grew very strongly, probably reflecting the seasonal impact of holiday shopping. Looking ahead, retailers are the most bearish about employment growth. Indeed, retailers expect to add jobs at only a 2.8% rate in the year to come. And the jobs they expect to add are mostly in IT and marketing and sales. So the impact of e-commerce and automation is showing itself showing up in store closings as we've seen particularly with some big chains and also in investment in e-commerce and digital delivery of retail services. With strong gains in revenue and performance and a big jump in employment, it's not surprising that middle market executives are feeling confident. As always, they're most confident in their local economies, the scene that they can see directly in front of them. 86% express confidence in that. 81% express confidence in the national U.S. economy. And 65% express strong confidence in the global economy. All three are the highest numbers we have seen in the last five years. Now, at least one of those numbers, the international number, the global com confidence number, is rather surprising if you think about Brexit, slower growth in China, Brazil struggling, uh, and, and, and political tensions and flat growth in Europe. But the numbers are what the numbers are. But we have another confidence indicator, a short-term indicator, in which we ask CEOs to predict short-term demand, business climate, and their own company's sales. And that number, which is at 81, is the highest we've seen in the last year and a half. Now, for the last five years, the U.S. economy has enjoyed pretty balmy weather. It has had moderate but steady growth, very low energy costs, low interest rates, little cost pressure on wages or materials, and slowing grows, rates of growth in healthcare costs. So, these benign conditions perhaps fuel the confidence, and it's unlikely that all of them will persist into the future. If and as they change, the middle market's challenges and its confidence may change too. For now, though, the middle market enters 2017 and the new year, and the middle market indicator enters its second half decade, showing the highest levels of confidence it ever has. With five full years of data and insights, on the, about this critical sector of the economy, this is a good moment to step back and make a few observations. First, the middle market is the driver, the engine that drives the U.S. economy. In every quarter except one, the first quarter of 2012, middle market revenue growth has outpaced the S&P 500, usually by huge margins. In this last year, 6.9% to 4.4%, as I mentioned. A similar story is told in the job picture, where we see middle market companies adding jobs about one and a half times faster than either large business or small business. Second observation is that this middle market growth is mostly organic. Expansion into new territory is the single largest source of growth in the middle market. 63% say they expand, expect to expand into new markets in 2017, and 48% did last year. The second biggest driver, also organic, is innovation. 48% of middle market companies say that they introduced new products or services last year. Mergers and acquisitions, deal-making, inorganic growth plays a notably smaller role. Only 24% of middle market companies made a deal buying or selling in 2016. Now this preference for organic over inorganic growth may partly explain why the middle market is such a vigorous source of job creation. Inorganic growth has many advantages and many opportunities, but it's often associated with the search for synergies, cost savings, cuts, whereas adding markets, adding products and services is almost always associated also with adding employment. Third observation, middle market companies tend to be very conservatively managed. Only one company in eight says it took on new debt last year. This despite confidence and expansion and historically low interest rates. This quarter, 35% of executives say that if they had an extra dollar of revenue, they would save it 
rather than put it immediately to work. These are overwhelmingly private companies and they've clearly expressed a desire to pay as they go. Fourth, talent is the middle market's biggest challenge and constraint. It stands to reason that the middle market is the most aggressive hirers of talent would feel a talent pinch more than other companies would. Middle market executives rank talent as their number one challenge more often than they rank managing costs or managing growth combined. And indeed, four out of 10 middle market companies, 37%, say that a lack of talent actually restrains their growth. As we look ahead, the middle market emphatically retains its position as the place to go, the place to look for economic growth and employment growth and dynamism in the U.S. economy. It's a powerful force driving expansion and job creation and a cohort of companies that merits the close attention and support of all of us. Our website, middlemarketcenter.org, posts the entire middle market indicator, the data I've summarized here, the full report, and also the raw data for this and all previous middle market indicators. There's no cost. There you will find, in addition to the MMI, much other research from the National Center for the Middle Market, research on topics like cybersecurity, managing talent, expanding trade in the Americas, and much more. The URL again is middlemarketcenter.org. For the National Center for the Middle Market, I'm Tom Stewart.